After Thanos' snap, we all sat there and cried in the cinema. Well, some of us did. Was it all over? Did the bad guy win? How would they possibly turn this to a good story with the good guys come out on top? It seemed impossible. And then, there was Endgame. They went back in time, brought everyone back, Thanos followed them, and they killed Thanos. Great. That was the end of the MCU. But then, in an attempt to milk the franchise even further, they started doing these single character TV shows on Disney+. Plus. First, they brought us WandaVision, and then next, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I, for one, was very excited about these shows because it was a way for me to continue enjoying the MCU after all of these years. I was never big on The Falcon until very, very late in the MCU franchise films, so getting a show with him and Bucky Barnes was a big W for me. It was a way for me to explore the character even further. Or so I thought. Let me explain. If I had to summarize, Falcon and the Winter Soldier just suffers from a couple of problems that kind of kills the story. Mainly the direction of the villain, but there's also a predictable plot and a bad ending. So let's dive into the first issue and expand on it further. The villain. So I'm a person who is much more a fan of a good villain than I am a good hero. I just kind of love when writers are able to explore the depths of the antagonist and use that to enhance the protagonist's story. I guess you could say I like when the heroes have to work just a little bit harder. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier suffers from the legacy left behind by Thanos. Because after years of lackluster villains, the MCU kind of finally managed to get a good villain. But to understand why Thanos was a good villain, we have to understand what is a good villain in the first place. And I believe that in order to write a good villain, he or she has to be extremely powerful and be a massive challenge to the protagonist. That's number one. Secondly, the villain needs to be motivated by something that we can fully understand. Having villains that are just evil for the sake of being evil is kind of lame. And those kind of people do exist in real life, but they're in the crazy minority. Like we need something that the general public understands. Thirdly, the villain needs to be so convinced by his or her own crazy idea that they are willing to do bad, bad things to achieve them. And lastly, we need to explore the character of the villain beyond their one evil idea. And Thanos checks all of those boxes off. It was almost like it was the first time in the MCU where we had a villain who did check all of those boxes off. Let's just try to explain Thanos by checking off these boxes. So number one, he's extremely powerful. In terms of brute force, he's just extremely powerful. So he checks box number one. And secondly, he's motivated by something. He's not just evil for the sake of being evil. He wants to restore balance in the universe. Thanos believes that there's just too many people and not enough resources. And then thirdly, he is so convinced by this that he is willing to take down half the population of every planet that he visits. And lastly, we definitely got to explore his character in Infinity War because in that movie, he actually had the most screen time. Far too often, movies will leave some of these boxes unchecked and that's where we get an unfulfilling villain. And the two problems I noticed the most are a lack of motivation and a lack of character study. Thanos was one of the few MCU villains who had an understandable motivation. And that's where this show, in my opinion, decided to take its inspiration from and eventually became its downfall. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier have a villain who has a motivation. It's very clear that they have a motivation, but I still think that the show suffers from two unchecked boxes and one of them is the villain's motivation. And the second one being a lack of a character study. So the motivation is evident. It's definitely evident. Actually, it's so evident that it gets annoying. The villain wants borderless countries where newfound refugees after Thanos' snap can find a safe place to stay. So that's a clear motivation. But why am I saying that the motivation is annoying and they have a problem with it? Well, the answer to that is that's all we know about the character. Almost every single time we see Carly Morgenthau on screen, her goal is shoved down her throat. They keep repeating how the system is unfair and needs to be fought, and they say this all the time. So although we get the villain's motivation is there, the overemphasis on the goal combined with a lack of character study 
just feels like they're trying way too hard to make us like and understand her. And it's not really working. At no point do we empathize with the character, but at no point do we also hate the character. We're just kind of stuck in a gray area, and all of this is happening with the real villain just sitting there waiting. Yes, I'm talking about John Walker, aka the new Captain America, aka US Agent. John Walker was just destined to be hated from the start because he's the new Captain America. Like, people are gonna hate him regardless. But his character development was far more intriguing than the Flag Smashers. And then they just decided not to use him properly. The end where he decides to save that truck rather than fight Carly it just puts him in the gray area box as well. And at that point, we neither loved him or hated him. So the direction, in my opinion, was awful. I believe they tried to make the villain way too relatable. And I think the story suffered because of this. And it's super unfortunate because I went into this wanting to like it. I like Anthony Mackie and I think the Falcon ended up being a pretty cool character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's just so unfortunate. The show just suffers from a bad villain, way too many cliches and a predictable plot. I mean, what was that ending? You've got to do better, Senator. You've got to step up. Because if you don't, the next Carly will. And you don't want to see 2.0. Look, you people have just as much power as an insane god or a misguided teenager. The question you have to ask yourself is, how are you going to use it? Did he just change the GRC's mind by just talking to them? Like, emotionally? How does that happen? I mean, if all it took was to talk to the GRC, I'm sure that the Flag Smashers wouldn't have had to do what they thought they had to do. So I think the story just breaks apart and like it, it's it doesn't work. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work and it's unfortunate. But overall, I'd still recommend this show because it is a continuation of the MCU and it's just got so many memories attached to it. Like it's literally attached to the past 10, 12, 15 years of our lives. So I would recommend this to Marvel fans because it does have some really great elements. But I could not recommend this to non-Marvel fans. So let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video and also who do you think should have been the villain? Carly Morgenthau and the Flag Smashers or John Walker aka US Agent? That's it for me today guys. If you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a comment, like the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And until next time, peace.